Hi everyone, and welcome to the very first episode of Floral Observations, where we crawl ourselves across the internet and the television to find floral shows, floral competitions, and any floral related content to bring you our personal opinions and our observations of the floral world. My name is Garrett Skopinski. And my name is Matthew Blinn. And we are going to be starting the very first episode off with what, Matt? Uh, we're going to start with Netflix's brand new flower competition. It is called The Big Flower Fight, um, done by the same folks who did The Great British Bake Off. And it is fun so far. We've watched a couple episodes, and we're going to get into the designs. We're not going to go over the full format of the show or whatever, but we're going to give our personal professional opinions and observations of how the designs have been done. So we're going to get right into it. This is our personal opinions. There will be spoilers, so be spoiled because we're here to give them to you. <laughs> so our first team that we saw in a finished piece, they were making large scale plantscapes that were made to be ginormous insects. And our very first team, love them, they are everything I want to be when I grow up, are Henrik and Jan. And they made a stink moss. Is it Hank? Hank. Like Hank with an N. Or I'm e sorry. Hank. <laughs> so Hank and Jan, they made a sphinx moss and it was everything. Um, they were given the metal base. So like we'll start with that, but then they have an excessive amount of plants. So Matt, give us your rundown of everything you were having in this fantasy. So, you know, I'm going to start off by saying that Hank and Jan, the moment I saw them, I was into it. I was like, uh, these men, yes. they dress Fabulously, they are <laughs> full-on characters. I saw them and I was like, oh, look, it's us in 20 years. It is us uh, when we are older. <laughs> yeah, precisely. But their design, I love it. I love it. They did a Sphinx moss. Uh, Sphinx moth made out of a bunch of moss and grasses and, and mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, plants that had, um, that are natural uh, pollinators. Um, and it was really cool. What I really love about their design is the way that they chose to go about the wings. Um, I was mm -hmm. worried with some of the other ones too. They, they built up the wings and they made the wings so heavy. And Hank yeah. and Jan really did a great job of really, you know, bringing levity, making that look like yeah. it was something light and something that could fly. And I really enjoyed that. So are you blooming it? Oh, I'm blooming, blooming it, girl. It? I am blooming. <laughs> I am blooming. All I would say, I would give this a bloom. They give the personality, their personality and their artistic, everything about how, who they are really feeds into their design. I really, really like how they looked at not just visual balance, but physical balance. They, you were saying with the wings, I believe it's bamboo or some type of natural product that is creating a beautiful pattern, but also a lightness and a texture in the design. So their texture is interacting with their balance. The balance is interacting with all the color harmony. It's, it's fantastic. Um, where some teams kind of stumbled with how to use moss, their moss was, had color intention. Mm -hmm. It had texture and it had focus intention. So I'm a total bloom. I would bloom all over the Sphinx moth. I really liked also, um, as you were talking about the balance, you know, the balance of the wings. And then they had that giant antenna going out to the front and they had like a little field of, absolutely. of flowers. Absolutely. They front. thought about and the it, actual insect. Exactly. It really drew the, the whole arrangement. Yeah. Like it, it, it made your eye overall all of it you know the whole entirety Absolutely. of it and it was great for those that don't know right down here we have pictures of the designs for us to refresh our memory and who belongs to who so if we're looking down we're not professionals these are our opinions we're, we're, we're floral designers yes we're just judging the designs that's all <laughs> so that's that's a double bloom are we blooming this team because absolutely <laughs> so our next team we know and we love they are genuinely fascinating kind people and that is sarah and jordan i've worked with them we've both been in their interviews and their instagram lives recently but they the personality that they show in the show is 100 percent them and i would have to say that the jewel beetle they made was an absolute bloom in my opinion um oh. their use of color and texture and they took what they know they're not landscape artists they're not landscapers they are floral designers they're high impact high scale floral event designers and to make that jewel beetle have the ombre effect which is pretty hard with plants because they are solid colors was fantastic the use of the bark the couple of issues i had i love their color i love that you can see the body um they forgot their legs 
they that's a that's a problem when everyone else has metal legs they did create an interesting solution using the willow but for the scale of the beetle the legs look like they were all shriveled up this is a dead beetle and it might be beautiful because of its jewel shell but the legs were like <laughs> um and with the judges it. I, I just agreed with that. the judges on that yes yeah I, I mean i agree i see what you're saying i just see that as like ooh, jonas jonas has taken it and he's gonna put it on a on a vase or something make a vase yes. out of it he doesn't need legs our favorite floral entomologist jonas would take this and just make something beautiful with it but the legs I get that they didn't have legs because they forgot to grab them, but it, it didn't hit the mark for me. The shell and the overall look of the head and how they created the jewel beetle out of this world, their energy is out of this world, just like our first team. They are gonna do very well, not because they're just good designers, but they're good teammates. They get each other's flow, but they understand the aspect of design outside of that specific challenge. Though they're floral designers or though they are artists or gardeners, these two teams so far have shown really good coordination with each other, but just overall understanding our principles and elements of art in general. So I'm giving them a bloom. The Jewel Beetle, Absolutely. she's a bloom. Girl, I give her a bloom too. As you were saying about that ombre, I mean, they're making an ombre without any sort of color shifting yeah. with plants, like full plants. There's not individual yeah. stems in there that they're creating with that ombre, which is much easier to create. I yeah. think that they did. A really fantastic job with this. I uh, I love, I know they're supposed to be antenna, but the judges even called them a mustache. I love their it, little mustache. It was a mustache. Antenna. We love you, oh. Sarah. We love you, Jordan, but she was a mustache. And it's cute as a mustache. So And they were fine with them being like, yeah, it's a mustache because you like it, go with it. Yeah. As those that don't know, Matt and I are one of the only teams that have competed internationally in floral competitions representing the U.S. So being a team is very difficult, but also we have that perspective of give the judges what they want. If they say, I love your color harmony because it's this, it does not matter what you think the detail was or the color harmony was, we especially oh, know. yes, yes it's exactly it's what I intended it. to do. <laughs> if the judges want it, then you let them have it and you sell it to the moon. Um, double blue, we're getting, we're doing great. I must say I didn't have the highest expectations for a gardeny based show, but we're doing wonderful. Um, we are moving into the butterflies. I have something to say about the butterflies. As competitors, and I know you do the same thing, when someone goes up, you go down. When they go left, you go right. The second you see multiple butterflies, you grab absolutely anything else in that room. You grab mm -hmm. any other color, style, bug, anything to not be a butterfly. When you think of insects and you think of beauty, you think of butterflies. I think it was very smart for every other team that had snails, dragonflies, any other bug but the butterfly. Yep. And while the teams did fine, none of them hit the mark for me. Um, but let's start. What are your thoughts on that? I, I mean, I completely agree with the butterfly thing. If, if I would, if we were to walk in there and see that another team has a butterfly, let alone two other teams have a butterfly, yeah. absolutely not, man. That butterfly is becoming <laughs> a ladybug or something. You know, it is absolutely. It's, it's, she's she's changing. She is yeah. having her memor metamorphosis cocoon moment. Right <laughs> she's gonna motor, metamorphosize back to a caterpillar, or she's exactly. gonna be something else. Exactly. Um, so let's start with our first butterfly. Um, I'm gonna mess up all these names. You're His welcome. His name, I, can, I, I got this one. I got There's this. Declan it's, uh, and... Declan and Owen. Owen and Declan, they are landscape designers. The they Irish created boys. our first butterfly, and they just went with pure butterfly, where others had more exact names. This is kind of smart, but it's also kind of dangerous, where if there is an exact type of bug, you can get its colors, its textures, its very finite details. Um, the judges love their butterfly, I thought the details were nice, but it did not read butterfly to me on the top. The judges love the top. Um, I like the bottom of the body with the grasses, but the underside of the wings was very flat. Um, to me, this would be my first prune because it's just such a concentration of color in the middle, such a concentration, like there, it lacks detail and it lacks finesse that the body had in the bottom. The parts that weren't even that important like, yes, it's nice to have those finishing details, but the bottom of the wings just, like, landed flat for me. It's a personal opinion, but this would be my first prune. I'm not getting a distinct color harmony. To me, there's not that visual balance. There's a good physical balance. It does look like it's about to flutter off of a flower, but I'm not seeing the level that we've seen from the first teams of color intent, 
physical and visual balance, texture, like the actual detail intent was put into things that to me were not as important. So this is my first prune of our first episode. <laughs> I see what you're saying. I, I feel like I feel the vibe that you're putting down. I am actually going to give this a bloom. And there's one reason why. Um, and that mm -hmm. is due to their mechanics. They are the only team that integrated an irrigation system into their design. That's true. Um, and part of the challenge was making sure that these pieces have longevity. They could last, um, yeah. And I thought that was really cool. I completely agree. The bottom mm -hmm. of the wings are flat. There is some interesting um, just choices in the way that they chose to distribute the color yeah. on top of the wings. However, I am a mechanics person at heart. I love yeah. cool mechanics. Um, I love being innovative in that way. So for that one Absolutely. reason, I'm going to go ahead and give them a bloom because I think they're the only team that really took that whole idea of like continuing. This thing can continue to grow, continue to yeah. live, continue to be a wild butterfly flying free in whatever you know little prairie it's in. So for that, Absolutely. I give it a bloom. You're entitled to your opinion. Yeah, even if I mean, it's, hey, it's not my favorite. It's, I'm not, it's not like, you know. I would say that it's right on the cusp. Like, yeah. it is beautiful. I, I give it a prune right below. And, and I give it a bloom just above. Because of so. where it was. So, moving on from one butterfly, let's flutter on to our next butterfly. And this one, I'm going to say, just like a lot of butterflies, it slightly disappointed me because while it was beautiful, it was incorrect to me. And this was Rachel and Dahlia. Um, they are from the U.S. They're another U.S. team. They chose the Monarch Butterfly. How easily perfect to execute in the colors they had and the products they chose, but then they didn't. Monarch Butterflies are one of the most iconic butterflies in the world because of the texture and color and the patterns and the look of them and how they interact with the eye. They are the number one, in my opinion, known butterfly and they missed the mark. To me, this is again another prune. Your color harmony is there, but then you have this weird basing of like purples. It's so much mass. It's mass on mass and you lose the overall butterfly effect to me, especially after seeing one the other butterflies. Um, but as a opinion of just this one, this is a prune because you don't have any of that fine detail. You don't have texture in the way that it flows and it creates the pattern of a monarch butterfly. And I think that hurt them in the way that the other butterfly kind of hurt themselves. It's missing a distinct monarch when you walk up and you just look at it. And we are only seeing pictures for those that are completely unaware. So to me, this is a prune through execution of flowers and products and just overall detail choices. Where's the monarch in this butterfly? I'm I'm with you. It's a prune for me too. Um, I think that they did uh, did a beautiful choice of flowers. Um, mm -hmm. I I like the I don't even mind the purples that are in there because they don't have anything do, that's like yeah. a, a real black. Um, however, I'm with you. The pattern is not there. Um, yeah. One of the things that I find so beautiful about monarch butterflies is you know their wings. the The pattern on their wings is so random, but they are symmetrical mm -hmm. to each other. Um, and yeah. that's part of the beauty to them and why we as humans find them so, you know, so, to be such a beautiful Absolutely. creature is because yeah. they're so visually pleasing. And this lacks that entirely. So to me, the, the true essence of the monarch is completely lost. It's just another butterfly. Um, if they had maybe marketed it as just a butterfly and not a monarch mm -hmm. butterfly, I may it have a different taken opinion it. on it. Yeah. Um, but I the think the other issue with this prune is the product choice is beautiful. But when you are supposed to make it last, Gerber daisies, no matter if it's a plant or if it's a cut flower, they are so difficult to mm -hmm. take a Gerber daisy and get it to last. And maybe that was the only plant in that color. We don't know. But they the also, product choice They could also be broke apart their soil balls a lot, as I, I was mm -hmm. noticing. Um, they didn't keep things super big. And I think, you know... Yeah. They have probably never worked with this medium prior to this. This is um, the first episode. We can be quite harsh, but as international competitors in this, what has been marketed as an international floral competition, as a TV floral competition, I come hard or I don't play the game. And well, I mean, if it's the same reason that I gave the last team a, pr a bloom was because they had the irrigation system because I thought of that mechanic. Yeah. When you completely disregard, you know, that part of it and the I know that that thing task. is not going to last. That is the task. That's part of the task, yeah. Exactly. I I've got it. So this, unfortunately, is our first double prune. It's beautiful, but it lacks that finesse and that professional touch. The next one kind of broke my heart in two ways. We have Stephen Monet. 
they are two of the only students in a floral university setting. To me, they are one of the few teams that is a floral novice in a floral novice competition. Um, they created the Painted Lady Butterfly. Do you know what Painted Lady Butterflies look like, Matt? I don't. Because I do. my head, I don't. They are orange and yellow, and they fade from like a tan out. Hmm. So I looked it up because I'm like, I want to know what these people are making. If you have an exact thing, let me have it. Give me the life. And I thought their color use and their plant products were beautiful. Mm -hmm. To me, it was a little too exact line. Mm -hmm. I'm giving this a prune because the color choices and the textures were beautiful. I disagree with the judges on balance. It is very symmetrically aligned. If I saw this in a yard, I'd be like, wow, that's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And while the bottom had seeds, there was the intent of drawing birds and drawing other animals to this. So part of this task was also that it was going to draw pollinators and other things. These two did make pretty smart choices. Were some of them not exactly perfect? No. I'm going to give them my just above a prune because there's color intention. Each, they almost got it pretty symmetrical. There's a nice lining and edging, and it's more focused on how the plants were utilized. So you'd say um, it's a baby bloom. It's, <laughs> it's a baby it's a, bloom. It's a bud. And I, I appreciate the color usage. That green is so striking in the middle. However, what just takes me down is I know what a painted lady butterfly looks like. And if I hadn't, I would have probably enjoyed this more. Um, I don't mind the bamboo body because it creates a beautiful texture, an interesting texture. This can also be watered from the top down and go right down into the grass and every and interact. So I'm out here giving a baby bloom. What are your thoughts? <laughs> uh, I'm with you. I'm with you on a baby bloom or a bud. Um, a bud, if you Because, want. you know, I, I like it. I love, I personally, I love the, they, the judges, I think they did give, give some trouble about the, uh, the, the bamboo body. Um, yeah. I really enjoy the bamboo body. I think that Absolutely. is what sets, sets it apart. It really delineates it as a butterfly. Um, mm -hmm. Butterflies don't have colorful bodies. They don't have beautiful bodies. They're little, like, that's the part that you can tell with a caterpillar. It's like wings. just a little yeah. wormy thing, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think they did a great job. I love their antenna. They're whimsical and fun. Um, I, I don't know what a painted lady butterfly looks like. <laughs> um, and so... I, you know, I don't have that criticism for it. I think the colors yeah. that they chose are very vibrant and beautiful. Um, it is, I know I said it literally in my last critique, I was like, it's a monarch, or, or to you. Yeah, it was the last critique. It's a monarch, yeah. it should be symmetrical. Um, I don't enjoy the symmetry of this one all that much, <laughs> but um, it's because it's not a mo you know, it's not a, a butterfly that I already associate with being Have symmetrical. a reference of how the pattern and how exactly. it's been right. Yeah. Um, but I think it's beautiful. I love, I, I think it'll grow, you know, well. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's really pretty about it. So yeah, I, I go ahead. I'm going to give this a bud. A bloom. A I'm, bloom. I'm here for a double bloom. It's beautiful. Again, we don't know their, the weight and the interaction of that. So let's move out of butterflies. Oh my goodness. Again, yeah. why? Oh, why would you, why would you do a butterfly? If you saw wings going everywhere, even if it's a dragonfly wing, get the, get out of flying bug world and find something. I'd do like a scorpion. I'd do something strange. Give me a spider with really cool textured legs. Oh, yeah. Um, And that draws me to the next one with Ryan and Andrew. They are artists. They are an artist couple. Um, one's a photographer and one does curate art and they made the honeybee and oh my goodness that's a bloom intent bloom. so much intent this was this bloom at all blown up. out of here bloom i did have a couple issues but i will let you start with this one okay tell me why this is perfect um to you. i they made they made they're the only team that made the choice to leave part of their structure open mm -hmm. and empty and they chose to do that in the wings and i think it was the Absolutely. smartest decision they could <laughs> have done it is so yeah. beautiful it is so striking I mean, the, the honeybee's wings, you know, they are clear. They've got that translucence, yeah. uh, the translucence to it. The intent um, it's, of knowing it's so nice. what was I in love, that. I love the, the, the grasses that they chose. It, it You know, yeah. it's like that furry honeybee that's flying. Like, I can see this bee flying around my mother's 100%. azaleas that she had growing up. Like, I, I can see it. It is there. It is live. Um, yeah. it's, it's the one. It's, there's an, enough whimsy to it, too, with the taller stems that they put on the back of it. It's, for me, it's perfect. This is yeah. what I want to see when I think of a 
you know, of a, fr of a flowering, growing, a living sculpture. Scape. This like, is what I want yeah. to see. I, so she's a bloom. Are you giving her a bloom? Girl, she is <laughs> Are bloom. we blooming? She is, the, she is um, blooming everywhere. This is like the shabloom kabloom. This is the bloom way up here where you can't even see the hands no more. She is the shabloom. And the eyes, I like how they went with a plant that almost sections off the eyes because the bee does have interesting eyes. The mm -hmm. wings. I would, just because I love extra things, I love extra everything. The wings could have went even farther, but I love them in their simplicity. Um, you could have had a very interesting grid work, just like the first team did. Yeah. But it's so good in its simplicity because then the body just gives you that energy and that flow, the softness of the grass. Then you have kind of like the little hairs that you would find in a bee just with the flowers that are pulled up. The legs are done really, really well. Um, texture, great. Visual balance, great. And it's one that's actually lifted up and actually is hovering in the air like it's The flying. line is really nice, too. The shape that Absolutely. they chose to, to make for the bee is just, it's beautiful. I like the subtle touch of orange to ignite my green and yellow also a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was the intent, but I get that idea of little pieces of pollen or like the interaction that you get with a honey-specific bee. Uh... Absolute bloom. Shabloom, babloom, babloom, all over the place. I love this. Kablam, kablam. Um, kabloom. <laughs> and then we go from the honeybee to some that weren't really showcased, and they were hard to find. They didn't really showcase all the designs, which blew my mind. That was... Um, and I, I had to search. That was, there were some that, that weren't even shown. Yeah. I, would, I know There's I'd be upset that... if I spent all this time making something, you know, beautiful. And I, I know it's just a safe, but, you know, it's still yeah. the bees. There's some that were fascinating buds you showed me three butterflies that were like okay they're butterflies they're nothing out of this world but the ones that they didn't show were such specific bugs that i'm like wait what the dragonfly so why can't i see the dragonfly that interestingly enough they didn't even show us a picture of a finished dragonfly mm -hmm. and i really felt bad for that team but we'll get to that yes. we're gonna move on to nick and taylor uh nick is known for his plants and his body on instagram but he <laughs> himself and Taylor are amazing plantscape artists in the home and outside the home, any size space throughout New York, they get plants. Um, so I kind of expect any kind of plantscape to be in the, their realm, to be in their wheelhouse. And I was kind of surprised by their design. They did an elderberry longhorn beetle. I don't know if they're che like choosing these bugs. I don't know if they are assigned to them, but like what? Is this specific, like, so specific? Um, I'm right, again, on that edge. This is our first episode, so we're only seeing, like, the first interactions of people with their design. But I'm going to have to prune this. Um, beetles are known for these nice shells that are either symmetrical or have, like, nice interaction. It seems like a bug that has some disease growing off of it. If that makes sense. It's got so many weird layers and levels. There's no real good color harmony that flows through it. And it's a lot of moss. Uh, to me, lots of moss in this type of design is completely safe. And when it's all the same brown, where we've seen green from other competitors, maybe they took all the green. But the color interaction is not pleasant to my eye with how much brown is on it. And then these weird levels just all over the place. It looks like a bug that has is being overtaken by nature. But that's that's why I gotta prune it. It's just not finished well. There's no color harmony. The visual interest is not there. Um, the textures are strange to me. What are your thoughts? I'm with you, it's a prune for me. Um, there's just, it's just, it looks like they took just a very basic pre-made form of a, of mm -hmm. like a moss beetle or whatever, and then literally yeah. just put flowers on top of it. Absolutely. Um, it's not a floral, it, to me, it's not a floral sculpture um, made yeah. with flowers. It looks like a sculpture a that was sculpture. then covered in moss Adorned. and then placed flowers yeah. on. Um, it almost I looks really like the like... bug is carrying something on exactly. it, which is strange exactly. to me. And I really like Nick and Taylor. You know, I follow them both on yeah. Instagram. Um, I think Taylor, is, I've always thought Taylor's handle on Instagram is hilarious. It's the planty dropper. If you don't already follow her, <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, but it, it, they, I think they missed the mark here. I, I know that yeah. they can do, uh, you know, I think they can do Knowing their well. energy and their plant knowledge. They're so good with plants. It's mm -hmm. very surprising. Um, so... Unfortunately, double, double prune. prune. 
The next one we did not see a lot of, I actually really like because I know what this was. The next we have Andy and Helen, they made the Hawk Moth. Um, this is one of the first times I've actually seen a very good representation of a trans competitor. Um, and Andy speaks on it later in other episodes, but it is so well focused on their skill, their passions and what they do. But let's talk about this Hawk Moth. You can start with your prune um, or your bloom. Well, the thing is, is it's, it's hard to get a good view. They didn't really show a good solid yeah. view of the finished Hawk Moth. Um, yeah. I think from the shots that we saw, I really enjoyed what I was seeing. Um, I think mm -hmm. that they did a really good job of staying in um, an area of neutral, like neutral palette, uh, yes. but still having it not be boring. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of texture, and there's like some like pink hues and undertones to things. Yes, um, and and that I think is really it's really cool. It's uh, really pleasing to the eye. Um, and so that, I'm going to go ahead and give them a bloom. I also just really like the team. Um, they seem like fun people to be around. They're just a good energy. Yeah. There's very, they did a very good job finding these competitors that independently, great energy, fascinating humans, but also as a team, they just, they bloom. Like, mm -hmm. it's just you and I, like, there's just this magnetism to each team. Um... I have to give this a bloom. Uh, the texture's good. I think that they're a little safe. I would like to see the top of the, the moth wing, but the placements are very good. I think that they did a good job on not making the moth too butterfly, where the other moth we saw had more details and all that going on. This is a moth that this is how I would see it. The textures are great. They have soft textures that are in the same color tones of harder textures near the face. Mm -hmm. They have the little pinchers in the front and antennas. The moss wings maybe give me a little bit more of a fantasy, some kind of color. We don't know what the structures are fully done, but the grass placement is really what takes it to me. That texture that falls, and you could see a breeze hitting that and moving mm -hmm. in your garden beautifully. Um, so to me, this is a bloom. I'm really intrigued to see how they play with color and texture because you can see that they enjoy texture and they are a little bit more straight on. They're like, this is the moth. This is what's supposed to be. There's, They could play a little bit more, but I very appreciate the textures that Andy and Helen did right here. That's so right. double bloom, double we're here bloom. to bloom. Okay. So next, this is what I would do. This is the insect because it's so weird and so out there and I'm so disappointed in it. It is the snail. It was made by Ralph and Jim. Ralph is the heart of this competition. He is there to help people. He is there to give you hugs in He's every, so like clip between competition or if someone needs something, we like, Ralph's there. He is the dad. He is there to make sure everyone succeeds. Well, and he's and Jim's dad. Just, <laughs> like, he's just there to let everyone thrive and just make sure everyone does their very best. But this snail, Girl. the second they say butterflies are everywhere, I'm going to something like this. The snail to me and how we design, I think we could have killed this. Um, the snail's shell could have had just interesting texture spiraling in and it would have been easy placements to make that spiral and then a really beautiful color blocking of green grasses or moss the face slash head is a weird box um the whole thing's a weird box the it's whole a weird thing box. is a weird and box i i, I have to print it box. like it's, it's yeah it box. like the form is really off when you get up close, there are interesting details that could have worked if there was the time to do them. Like they have the stick ends. If that mm -hmm. actually made the edging of the whole thing, it would have made more sense. I see mums. Like, I like the lavender on the top of it. I think that's a nice absolutely. touch. Kind of, you know, it's just one of those in the breeze, fine like detailing. Like I don't understand it's, the head it's of it. So it's just so like such a barrel. Or, and you, you can know, see the different parts they worked on. Here's the head. It's a square. Here's the bottom. It's like a trapezoid. And then here's a curved kind the of The shell goes edge like, like this this way, but then when you turn it, it goes like this. And it should go yeah. like this. You know, it should have yeah. some, some curvature um, to it. So it's a prune. It's it's, a prune. It had so many good opportunities. That's That was the insect to be. Um, that and like maybe a beetle. Those were the things to be. Beetle, beautiful color and energy. This, you could have played with texture, you could have played with color, how the line is drawn to the front, like 
give me some crazy eyes, give me some kind of detail that really sets apart. I'm pretty sure those red daisies are supposed to be its eyes because of how it's elevated off her little antennas mm. and the orange are supposed to be eyes or something. It's just, it's confusing for what it a is. snail is and what we've seen. So to me, that's a prune, unfortunately. Love them and the energy they bring, but it's a prune for me. Unfortunately, that's all they showed us because Raymond and Chanel, who are awesome, it's a fashion designer mixed with a London or some, uh, I believe he's in London. Yes, he's uh, in London. Floral designer. What a dream team. I love inspiration from fashion. Love she their draws energy in, too. Like so good. And her inspirations are from it girls now and it fashionistas now and very aware of colors and styles now. While Raymond understands the flowers of now, they should be killing it. But we don't know because we never saw their design. They did I got a dragonfly, to see, like, I'm an sure. Edge I of the wing. It. Absolutely. Um, I was really excited to see the dragonfly because you get those way more exaggerated bodies and wings and part of the design and how the colors could interact. That's where you could bring in the wings that we saw from the very first uh, moth, where you have texture in it, but it's mm -hmm. airy and see-through, but you still see the veining. Like, dragonfly, that and snail. Um, unfortunately, they didn't show everyone, which I think is really strange to not... And but what a disappointment for the seconds. contestants who put in all that work on something. And yeah. It's like, hey. And I was, I again, they have good energy. Uh, we can't, we can't bloom or prune them because we don't know what they did. Which for Netflix, girl, you got the budget to add. But I'm three gonna go ahead and say, team. I like them as a team. So I guess you can, I do too. You can call I thought the team's really good. Something. I don't know. Um, we're competitors. I'm not here. Like, I will help you if you need something, but I want to win. I don't even know what they win. They, yeah, Did they you, never mentioned what the grand prize like, was. Which is this, also it's fun. very strange that you don't hear what the prize is. There's not a full premise. Um, what are your thoughts on the judges that were brought in, the judge that was brought in, and the hosts and judges? Um, <laughs> I, have some, I have some choices, or I have some thoughts. Um... The, you have some main, observations. The, uh, some observ I have some observations, <laughs> yes. Um, the main judge, um, based on the first episode, um, isn't my favorite. Um, I, Kristen, I, I, uh, I think that he um, has very good intentions. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that he is being very kind to all the competitors, which is very nice. Absolutely. Um, yeah. However, I... Um, I don't know how to put this nicely, or I'm not going to sound like I'm just really mean, but I just don't think he has that much personality. Um, no. I think it's a little, it comes off a little flat. Um, I love the other two hosts, Van and, yeah. um, the, or I'm sorry, Vic and the, the girl, um, I don't remember her name, but she's super cute. She's got great personality. Um, and I think just around the two of them, he's a little overshadowed. Yeah. Um, they have a good energy that feeds off of each other, and he seems like, a, he seems like the judge. But, like, they play it like a host. I, unfortunately, had no clue who he was. And that doesn't mean anything. It's not that I know every florist in America. But to be around the world of people that do celebrity events, the people that are doing private gifts or floristry for celebrities, I find it fascinating that I've never heard of him before. Um, and he has plant knowledge and he has event knowledge, but this is not an event or floral competition and so i thought his critiques were kind of they fell flat for me you're not talking about how to enhance their color or their texture how the eye moves through their design um but honestly and we'll that's see that kind in of, other episodes that's kind of a problem more. that i have with the um the, the premise of the show to begin with mm -hmm. um i've been enjoying it so far i it's, yeah. it's not what i anticipated though when i first <laughs> yeah. heard that it was the creators of the great british bake-off doing a reality competition. I was hoping that it was actually, a floral competition. I was hoping it was actually a gonna be floral, floral artistry. Great British Break Off was what I was sold, not a landscaping and gardening show, yeah. which it will evolve and maybe change, but. I wanted to I'm see intrigued. challenges on design, you know, principles yeah. of design and elements of design and. I wanted a quality control and it's more about just making things. Now, and the other judge, 
there's some very talented designers on there who are making yeah. good design. Like, Absolutely. For example, As we saw for, today, for example yeah. Hank and Jan, you know, Sarah and Jordan. Those are mm-hmm. teams who, who know their design. Um, I believe, I don't know if it's Hank or Jan, but one of them is a Chelsea Gold medalist. Um, we all, yeah. I mean, pretty much everyone in the in United States floral industry knows of Sarah Campbell. I mean, she's, she's, yeah. she's a bop. She's an um, energy. She's known for this type of work like yes she does not do plants but she does large scale mechanical pieces and this is her vibe that's another thing i want to touch on is i don't think they advertise it as much now but this was advertised as novices competing and while some are and are very like in university we have the father and son team that university slash gardener kind of vibe of a dad supporting the son i love sarah and i love jordan but they are not novice no. Jordan may not design very often, but she works and is employed by one of the most well-known structural large-scale designers. Busy. In Sarah the is US. always working. <laughs> um, and this is what they do. They like are always educating. I think if you're a Chelsea Flower Garden show winner, how in the heck is that a novice? Um, even if you're the assistant, you have such a high level mm-hmm. that unless it's done like competitions where you and I have been in where the assistants sit in a room and the main designer designs the piece, it's it's too involved with these actual designers, um, flower shop owners. Yeah. I'm sorry, yes, we have one's dancer, but they work actively in a shop doing floral design, whether it's small or big. If you know mechanics, you know mechanics and you can make it larger. Some of these are hard and I know we would stumble with plants and stuff like that, but it's it's an interesting show. I'm intrigued to see how it evolves. Um, there's things that aren't my favorite and I would totally prune them, but there's things I'm living for because I've brushed away the mindset of a floral design competition and I'm here for Gardenscape. I'm here to enjoy plants That's and it. really just enjoying flowers, but in this aspect of things that maybe I wouldn't have used them for. Is floral landscape sculpture new? Absolutely not. But do I like the perspective of an artist versus a designer versus a gardener versus a university student? And I'm here for that. Well, so we have a top bloom of the week. My top bloom of the week, my my bloomer, if you will, is the honeybee. Um, it was fascinating. It was captivating the texture was there that is the bloomer of the week it's ryan and andrew being artists you can see how they interact with color how they interact with texture they have the body form in such a beautiful way it is it that is and how the level and it, and needs it, to has, be continued. it has the, the thing is, is it has all of the the principles and elements that i mm-hmm. was looking for in this competition Absolutely. to begin with it's got you know beautiful Absolutely. form it's got beautiful balance it's got beautiful it, it's beautiful color texture it's it's gorgeous i i love it it's it's fantastic they did a great job and i'm excited to see what they continue to do they're Absolutely. they're like very weird in a really good way that i like weird. <laughs> in like, an artist my way. type of weird and i'm into it Unfortunately, we saw Steph and Monet go home from their painted lady butterfly, but they did beautiful work. The competition is very high right off the bat. This is not people stumbling and falling apart yet. And it's very high for it's university scary, students yeah. that aren't even like they're just hitting their 20s. They're killing it. And I mean, they're doing they, great. They, got, they got blooms from us and they, are, they were nominated. So. <laughs> they did get a bloom. And all that matters is our opinion to us. So that's all that matters. But we did see Stephanie and Monet go home. And I'm excited to see what episode two has for us. So Matt, what do you have to say for the people that are waiting to see episode oh, number two? Well, um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. We're going we're gonna to do this and we'll be back here for another installment of uh, Bloom and Prune. I believe episode two is all about grass. Um, no, 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 I lied, I lied. That's, that's, Episode two is all about floral fashions, which is and something if that you know the two of us. 
We thrive off of floral fashion. Uh, you can find us all over the internet. We have a live on Facebook Live at Floral Today every Friday. The times vary depending on if we have Europeans, Asian designers, Middle Eastern designers, and ourselves. So always talk, check the Facebook for our Facebook Lives on Friday. Matt, where can we find you on the internet? You can find me on my Instagram at Coach Blind Florals or on my website, www.coachblindflorals.com. Where we can find what from our you Facebook You can lives. find all sorts of things. You can find beautiful galleries of my work, but you can also find the entire library of our Floral Friday series. I've compiled it all into one spot for, on the website there, <laughs> and you can go ahead and uh, watch all of our episodes, see all of our guests, and see everything that we've been making recently. So I think that's it for episode one. We had some blooms. We had some prunes. And we just had a good old time just floral observating and giving out our opinions. So join us for episode two real soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye, friends. <laughs>